August 2019, hundreds of thousands of people have come out to protest against a controversial bill in Hong Kong. Many of the protesters are wearing black t-shirts, yellow helmets, gloves, gas masks, and goggles as they keep themselves prepared to face tear gas and rubber bullets from the police. Major subway lines have been suspended or delayed as protesters block trains from leaving stations. The city of Hong Kong is in complete chaos. Interesting, in the city of Macau, about an hour's ride from Hong Kong, the picture couldn't be more different. There are no violent clashes between protesters and police, no clouds of tear gas permeating the air. In fact, there are no protests at all. Hong Kong and Macau have a lot of things in common. Both were former European colonies, both now exist as special administrative regions of China and maintain separate legal, administrative, and judicial systems from the rest of the country under one country, two systems arrangement. Both have freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, and freedom of press, none of which exist in mainland China. On the surface, though, it seems Hong Kong and Macau are more or less the same, but in reality, they are fundamentally different from each other. For starters, while Macau was a Portuguese colony, Hong Kong was a British colony. While Britain handed over Hong Kong to China in 1997, Portugal handed over Macau in 1999. The handovers happened on the condition that China would let both these territories maintain their separate political, economic, and judicial system for the next 50 years. Interestingly, Macau was already being governed by the Chinese Communist Party well before its handover in 1999. To understand how that happened, we need to go back to December 1966. In December 1966, a series of political demonstrations and rioting against Portuguese colonial rule occurred in Macau. In response, Macau's police violently cracked down on protesters. Most of those protesters were either members or sympathizers of the Chinese Communist Party and were heavily inspired by Mao Zedong's Cultural Revolution in mainland China. Pressured by the business leaders in Macau and the mainland Chinese government, the Portuguese colonial government agreed to meet the demands of the protesters and apologized for the police crackdown. After that incident, while the Portuguese colonial government's control over Macau diminished, the mainland Chinese government's grip over Macau strengthened, with Chinese communist leader Ho Yin becoming the de facto governor of Macau. Not to mention even the official Portuguese and Chinese positions about the political status of Macau also changed from colony or overseas territory to Chinese territory under Portuguese administration. On the other hand, similar kinds of riots by the Chinese Communist Party sympathizers against British colonial rule in Hong Kong in 1967 yielded completely different results. The British colonial government handled the protests pretty smartly and didn't succumb to the pressure of the mainland Chinese government. After that incident, the British colonial government even increased its grip on Hong Kong and kept itself a lot in communist activities in Hong Kong. Therefore, Chinese Communist Party sympathizers were unable to infiltrate Hong Kong's administration the way they did in Macau. Before the handover of Macau to China, almost all top-level legal and administrative posts were held by the Portuguese. Hence, there was a dire shortage of well-qualified legal and administrative professionals among Macau's population at that time. Eight years before Macau returned to Chinese rule in 1999, China and the Portuguese colonial government agreed to send some mainland Chinese nationals to Portugal to learn the language and legal system. China sent at least 12 mainlanders to Portugal. All 12 were born and raised in mainland China and had not lived in Macau before going to Portugal. 
On a returning from Portugal, they took top government posts in Macau's legal and administrative services. Contrary to that, in Hong Kong, a lot of top government posts were already being held by Hong Kongers well before the handover in 1997. Thus, there was no shortage of local talents for legal and administrative services among Hong Kong's population. In Hong Kong, while the percentage of people who identify themselves as Hong Kongers is on a steep rise, those feeling proud of becoming a national citizen of China has rapidly declined. According to a 2019 survey, the percentage of people identifying as Chinese was at 11%, the lowest since 1997. On the other hand, in Macau, most of the people not only feel proud of becoming a national citizen of China, but are also more trusting of the central government in Beijing. Such a prevailing sense of not having a distinct identity from mainlanders among the people of Macau also lies in the fact that almost half of its citizens were born in mainland China. Compare that with Hong Kong, where only 31% of the population were born in mainland China. According to the 2001 census, conducted just two years after the handover, only 3% of Macau's population could speak Portuguese, despite four and a half centuries of Portuguese colonial rule in the territory. Now, a mere 1% of the population could speak Portuguese. On the other hand, in Hong Kong, nearly 48% of the population were able to speak English in 1996, just one year before the handover. Now, almost 53% of the population could speak English. Education in Macau also plays a critical role in ensuring loyalty among the citizens towards the central government in Beijing. On December 19, 2019, Chinese President Xi Jinping praised Macau for its effort in instilling love for the Chinese nation in the hearts of young people through patriotic education at schools. Macau's government develops and publishes school textbooks working closely with People's Education Press, a publishing house under the direct leadership of the Ministry of Education on the mainland. The textbooks on subjects including history, moral, and civic education are almost the same as those used in mainland China. In kindergarten, students are taught to sing the national anthem. When students enter junior high school, they start learning about Macau basic law, Chinese history, and traditional culture. And when they finally enter high school, students will learn to consider various aspects about the country and its relationship with other countries. Contrary to that, Hong Kong runs a very different school education system. It is liberal studies, which is a core subject for all senior secondary students. The subject has six major modules, personal development and interpersonal relationship, Hong Kong today, modern China, globalization, public health, and the energy technology and the environment. Under Hong Kong Today module, topics like examination of rule of law, socio-political participation, and local identity are discussed. On the other hand, modern China module covers topics like the Tiananmen Square crackdown in 1989 and the mainland's legal system. The Chinese central government and pro-Beijing politicians in Hong Kong blame liberal studies for inciting young people to political activism. In July 2012, tens of thousands of Hong Kongers protested against plans to introduce Macau-style patriotic education in Hong Kong. The plan was to make moral and national education lessons compulsory in primary and secondary schools. The curriculum described Chinese Communist Party as progressive, selfless, and united, and criticized multi-party system with no mention of the Cultural Revolution or the 1989 massacre in Tiananmen Square. This was seen by many in Hong Kong as a brainwashing tool. 
as protest against the curriculum intensified, the Hong Kong government backed down and made the curriculum voluntary for schools. Perhaps the biggest reason why Macronese get along so well with mainland China has to do with wealth more than anything else. In 2019, Macau's per capita GDP was $129,451, nearly double that of Hong Kong and seven times that of rest of China. Often dubbed the gambling capital of the world for its booming casino industry, casino taxes account for 87% of Macau's economy. Not to mention, Macau is the only place in China where gambling is permitted. Moreover, of the 35 million tourists that visited Macau's casinos in 2018, more than 70% were from mainland China. In 2019, the unemployment rate in Macau dropped to 1.7% thanks to the city's casino industry, which employs more than 100,000 workers. The majority of these workers don't have the right set of skills to find employment elsewhere. Furthermore, the city's government provides yearly cash handouts of around $1,200 to all its permanent residents. Therefore, for Macronese, going against China means going against their livelihood. If you liked this video, then hit the like button and consider subscribing to a very well informed.